He is one of the best to ever do it. And he is getting set for another season in the booth on Sunday Night Football and NBC's coverage of the National Football League that begins one week from tonight with the big kickoff in Kansas City. The banner raised for the Chiefs against the Detroit Lions. Chris Collinsworth back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Chris? Rich Eisen, what's happening, baby? I just got to tell you that this year, out of all the years that you dogged my good friends, the Ohio State Buckeyes, mm-hmm. at the uh, annual induction ceremonies in yes. Canton, Ohio, mm-hmm. I thought this year you crushed them harder. Than <laughs> it was legitimately <laughs> funny. There was nothing they could say back. And it was game over. Game, <laughs> set, and match for Rich Eisen. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate it. I overhand smashed it. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I love the silence and the booze at the same time. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I drink the tears. I appreciate that. And it was great. Uh, I, I, I figured you were in the audience because Fred Gadelli went in, uh, the longtime yeah. producer of Sunday Night Football, and now uh, Thursday night and – also now moving on from that uh, into the into the Hall of Fame. And, it you know, I, it was pretty sweet to see everybody there. It was a great night. Freddie deserves it. He's the best that's ever done it. He just is absolutely amazing, the work that he's put in over the past, God, I don't know, what is it, 25 years plus of primetime coverage between Monday night football and Sunday night and ESPN days and, all the days of doing all the college basketball with Dick Vitale and the college world series. This guy, he's seen it all, but he never stopped grinding. And they, they absolutely got it right. Putting him in the hall of fame. Did you, did you ever go across the middle on Mel Blunt? Chris, did that ever happen in your life? In your career? No, because I could never get to the middle. I could never get off the line of scrimmage against Mel Blunt. I've (laughs) done That was that guy was uh, not only was he big and fast, but his arms felt like they were like eight feet long, each one of them, and just trying to get off the ball and release down the field and <laughs> try to make a play. You know, it was tough. I, I, he is a very, very, very underrated player, and I and I was playing him really more towards the end of his career. I can't imagine what he was like when he was uh, in his prime. Well, that's why they changed the rules, right, Chris? Pretty much. Uh, and and they darn well should have, too, because, uh, you know, he it, that whole team, though, that whole defense, I, I mean, I, I can honestly remember uh, I went out on the field. We played them, I want to say, week two or three of my rookie year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, if you grew up when I did in the 70s, being in high school and junior high and everything, the Steelers won everything, right? They won four Super Bowl titles. And so I, I literally went out and sat on the bench and watched them warm up a little bit. I had to get over the fact that I was playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, I mean, it was it was mind-boggling for me. And um, there was there was multiple times, but um, the one in, in particular I remember was Kenny Anderson um, calling a slant and early in the game in this particular game. And I'm thinking, I got to take about five steps up here and turn left and run right into where Jack Lambert's going to be. And I remember thinking that does not seem like a great concept to me, <laughs> but they're going to pay me to do this. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and do this mm-hmm. no matter what my body and no matter what my brain is telling me to do. And so I was like, okay, all right, I'm going to do it. So I, I mean, you know, I break the huddle and I was like, come on now, don't be afraid that you're an NFL player. Now I said, I, I might catch this thing and run right over Jack Lambert. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to go. So Anderson gets the line of scrimmage, you know, hut two, three, four, here we go. And I jump off about four or five steps up the field, take a hard left, run right in towards Jack Lambert. And that sucker hit me so hard. Mm. <laughs> he hit me so hard and he's lying on top of me and he took his elbow and he put it down into my throat and he raised his knee up into my groin. And he grabbed my face mask and he looked at me and he said, Collinsworth, if you ever come over the middle again, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so I, I, come, I come staggering to my feet, you know, and I'm waddling back over to, the, to the, my huddle. And I got this big smile on my face. And Anthony Boone our great all pro, looked at me and said, what the heck you smiled about? Jack Lambert almost killed you over there. 
I said, I know, but he knew my name, man. Jack Lambert <laughs> knew my name. <laughs> I love that story, Chris. And, you know, one of my favorite yeah. moments of my entire TV career, sitting on the NFL film set with you and Belichick for the NFL 100 all-time team show, and uh, we had Mean Joe Green in studio. And this was one yeah. of the this is one of the later shows that we did in our shoot. So Belichick was feeling more comfortable um, on set doing these shows, and we're getting set to record the Mean Joe Green segment. And he says the only time he said in the two days we did our shoot together, Chris, was he's like, "Would you mind if I ask the first question?" So I'm like, "No, go ahead." Like I can't wait to hear what you want to ask Mean Joe Green about. You know, steel curtain this or growing up watching that and all of that. And the first question you ask him about the Coke commercial. I'll never forget yeah. that. I and mean, he's just like, tell me, yeah. how many takes did that take? Me and Joe Green? It was unbelievable. He was like the kid in the commercial asking me Joe Green for his jersey. Chris? It, it, it was. It, it was fun. You know, everybody has to be somebody, right? On Sunday night, I have to be somebody on your shows on your multiple shows, you've got to be somebody. But every once in a while, somebody takes you out of character, right? Somebody takes you back to that childhood moment and thing that you can remember the most. I, I remember for me, I, I, I was a kid who grew up in Florida, and I loved everything Baltimore. I have no idea why. I loved the Colts. I loved Johnny Unitas and Mackie and Tom Matty, all those things. But I also loved the Orioles. So that was my city. That was my team. I'm probably the only kid that ever left Florida, made his parents take him on vacation to Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> and that's where we went. And I go up there and I saw a couple of Orioles games and just loved it. Well, many, many years later, I was doing a radio show in Cincinnati, hosting the show here, and Boog Powell came around pitching something. I don't know what it was. I was like, oh, absolutely. Sign him up. I'll sell whatever he's got on the radio. Mm. And so he comes on, and I can remember, I, I mean, I've done this forever. I've played in Super Bowls. I, you know, I could barely talk to that man. It was like I became this, like, 12-year-old boy again trying to talk to the great Boog Pal. And it's funny how some people just get you like that. No doubt. Chris Collinsworth here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, well, let's jump into this playing season. What do you what are you most looking forward to having answered from all the questions we've been asking since last year's Super Bowl the most? Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to watch the AFC this year, to be honest with you. I, I I just don't remember a time. Maybe you have to go back to the seventies and you know, all those great Dolphin teams and the Steelers and the Raiders. And I mean, you know, when it was just unbelievable. Um, but it, this is as loaded as I can ever remember the AFC being. I, I mean, I almost have to pick out teams that I don't think have a chance to win the AFC this year. And it's a pretty small number. And even those, like I would probably put the Patriots in that mix, but you got Bill Belichick coaching that team. So do they have a chance? Yeah, probably. Everybody in the North, I think, has a chance. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the Colts are going to do, but there's only a handful of teams now that you just go. I mean, even the Broncos, you go could with Sean and Russell. Could they do it? Of course they could. And so, I mean, it's just it's just one of those years, I think. And for me, I, I look at it like – these teams are going to be so battle-tested come playoff time that the teams that win the division may not be the ones that are going on, you know, that you're going to see some team that gets healthy at the end of the year and all of a sudden, you know, they're coming out of the wild card and they're going to make a run. And you just wonder if the NFC is going to be like that. Now, we all get fooled, right? But, it, you know, Eagles, Cowboys, 49ers, Pick out who else you like. You may like the Lions. You may like the Vikings. Maybe the Giants. You know, whoever the Seahawks. Whoever it is, it, it's your thing. But it's not that across the board sort of um, uh, just powerhouse that it feels like that the AFC is right now. How real do you think the Jets are, Chris? Uh, tell me why they can't win it. 
I mean, I watched their defense. I, 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 we did our fantasy football draft last night. And if you need fantasy help, go to PFF.com. Give you all you need. Yep. But we did our fantasy draft last night. And and I, I'm, I almost took them with the first overall pick of when we got down to picking the defenses. Mm-hmm. Uh, over the 49ers, over the Steelers, over – but somebody took them ahead of me. I mean, they can rush the passer. They have two tremendous cornerbacks, the young cornerbacks uh, on the outside. They finished fourth or fifth in the league in defense last year. They, everybody uh, in that organization thinks they're much better than they what they were a season ago. And you've got a guy who's won two out of the last three MVPs playing quarterback for you now. Uh, and with with rookie of the year, um, uh, on the offensive side uh, and, and potentially the other rookie of the year if he hadn't gotten hurt halfway through the season. So I, I don't. I think it's a good mix of young and old. Uh, it's a coaching staff that, that's uh, been together now for a little while, and, and they've got a two-year window apparently here with Aaron Rodgers where, yeah, I think they're as good as anybody. Yeah, you're going to see some tests obviously firsthand on, on Sunday night. Um, real quick, Miami at New England is huge. Pittsburgh at Vegas. Um, then uh, you got uh, a crown jewel, which is Rodgers um, welcoming in Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. So you get the Chiefs twice in the first month of the season. Um, I'm 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 assuming you haven't been to Kansas City just yet. What what's the nope. weaknesses here? Uh, I, I mean, I, I look at their receiving core, and I, you know that just looks like cheese to be taken because you know Juju's gone and Kadarius Tony has not been, you know, a health. Uh, he, he hasn't been healthy. Uh, I'm just wondering what what could the Chris Jones holding out? I don't know what what could take him out this year, Chris. Yeah, I, I think. I think it has to be among those things, though, right? I mean, uh, the idea that they took Tyreek Hill out of that lineup last year and nothing changed, right? <laughs> it, it was out of everything that happened a season ago. To me, that was the most mind-boggling. And maybe if Tyreek hadn't done what he did in Kansas City, you go, oh, well, it was just Mahomes. But what he did in Miami was unbelievable. So now I think it comes down to – you know, some health issues, right? Kadarius Tony can be unbelievable. I mean, I, my line on him is if the whole NFL played tag, he would win. <laughs> Nobody can get that guy. When he was at Florida, he just couldn't cover him. Rasheed Rice is a nice player back there. You know, Sky Moore, I think, in year two is going to come in. This Justin Ross, when he was at Clemson, Justin Ross in his freshman year was like, the world record holder. Like there, nobody had a freshman year like this guy had. He had some injuries. He had a neck thing. He had a foot thing. He had he had some things. But but if he can be the guy, so I think there is that uncertainty with the receiving core. Travis Kelsey, you want to think he can play till he's fifty. At some point, people usually begin showing some sign of age that he hasn't yet in in his mid thirties here. Uh, but probably what happens at the at the two tackle positions, you know, they pay big money. Uh, they change out both tackles for Juwan Taylor uh, and they go get Donovan Smith, who struggled with some injuries, had a tough year last year. So I would think Donovan Smith at the left tackle is the guy they're going to have to to probably try and help a little bit. But realistically, Travis Kelsey was chipping all year last year and going out and still had this unbelievable season. So I don't know what slows you down if you have 15 playing quarterback back there. Um, but, you know, and I and Chris Jones is a great player. You take Chris Jones out for half a season, when I mean, that's what he's talked about. Is he going to hold out for half a year or not? That's uh, that, that will be tough to overcome. Chris Collinsworth, Sunday Night Football and Pro Football Focus at Collinsworth PFF, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show for a few more minutes. Give me – an NFC team we're not talking about enough, Chris. Um, Who are we not? NFC team we're not thinking about. Correct. Enough. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm going to say I'm going to say the Saints because I do think that they're going to be a really good looking team on the defensive side. 
I mean, I can remember watching them going against Tom Brady and exactly, you know, what all they were able to do to him on the, on the defense. Um, and, and then adding Derek Carr and, and, you know, I know Derek Carr really hasn't ever won anything, but he can keep it together. I don't think that Derek, Derek is going to crack the code. He's going to know what he's doing. He's going to know how to run Pete Carmichael's offense. He's going to be able to get it done. And then the defense is, is going to be hopefully what it, what it has been. Um, so I, I just think in a lesser division in the NFC South, they could be that team that ended up winning 12 kind of games and getting some home playoff games in that dome and could scare the Philly, Dallas, San Francisco crowd this year. And then let's do that for the AFC because we're all focused on the division winners from last year and for good reason. Um, the Jets, we just hit with Rodgers, um, and clearly there's some somebody lurking out there that's going to pop in and maybe make the playoffs when they didn't last year. Which is that AFC team in your mind? Um, I really feel like anybody out of the AFC North could end up there. Uh, so I'm just going to I'm going to do a, a block grant there <laughs> to myself and say that that that's a possibility, but. I, I really think that we have to think in terms of what the Chargers could be. And I do this every year. I, I, I feel like it's dope every year because I do it every year. Because I just keep looking at this franchise and going, what? <laughs> what, what is it that, that you don't feel good about, at least on the offensive side of this thing? And now you throw in Kellen Moore. And Kellen Moore is going to be one of the most talked about guys in the league this year. And probably – half the audience has no idea who I'm talking about. He was the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. Basically got fired. Um, and Mike McCarthy's going to take over the play calling there. So they think that they're going to get more big plays and everything there. And then Kellen Moore, who had like top five offenses, number one offenses the whole time. Basically he was there with the Dallas Cowboys comes over and is going to take over with Justin Herbert who has as much talent as anybody. Uh, they signed this Clinton Johnson out of TCU, who was absolutely, you know, one of the most dynamic players uh, there. And then it's can Keenan Allen stay healthy? Can Mike Williams stay healthy? Is Austin Eckler, who I would think is not going to be in a very good mood this year and wanting to prove something, uh, as all the contract stuff went crazy for running backs this year, so I just keep looking at this thing, Rashawn Slater. I mean, Corey Lindsley at center. They, there are some really, really good players on this offense um, that I, I think they could be dynamic. They should be dynamic, you know, assuming Boza and Mack are, are healthy and good. So one week from tonight, as we know, uh, you're, you're uh, in the booth to kick it all off. Um, who do you think winds up in the Super Bowl? Chris, you see all the numbers at PFF, and you're prepared as more than anybody else for for this season. What do you got for me on that front? I've never done this before. It's my first time ever. Okay. And I'm taking the Cincinnati Bengals. I, 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 if they can't win it, I, I can't tell you why unless Joe Burrow's calf ends up being a bigger deal. You know, if, he, if Joe Burrow makes it through the year, this is a guy who has done just phenomenal things. He beat, you know, Patrick Mahomes three straight games. And the one he lost in the championship game at Kansas City, if they don't get a late push out of bounds by Osai, I think it was, yep. uh, they, they probably go into overtime in that game, and, and we see how it goes. They add Orlando Brown at left tackle. Their skill positions, I'll match up with anybody in the league. Jamar Chase. Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. That's really good. That's really good. And they've improved on the offensive line. Uh, I think Lou Anarumo, I don't know how much time you've ever spent with him, but a very, very smart guy who's going to change up. They've got some real speed back in the secondary now. This Cam Taylor Britt is going to be a star. Hopefully Chitabe Awuja comes back. Um, but, you know, Dax Hill, Nick Scott, they're young, they're talented. 
DJ Reader's a hell of a player. I, I, I just I look at them and I go, why not? And and unfortunately for them, this is probably when the window closes. You know, they're going to have to pay Joe. They're going to have to, you know, not have. But right now, they have all these guys on the roster, and this is their shot. I, I and why not? I think they could do it. Who do they beat? Um, you know, it's easy to say Kansas City has been those two teams for so long now. I, I'm just trying to think who else it. Uh, well, well, who's know, the, I guess the who's the team NFC team? Win. Who's the NFC team that they beat in the Super Bowl then? Who do you put? I would never bet this. The Eagles are the best team, I, you know, I, in my mind. And they just keep adding more and more to it. Um, I, I probably wouldn't take them because they're such a huge favorite. But when I was looking at their roster before the season last year, I was like, who has better talent than this, assuming Jalen Hurts plays well? And Jalen Hurts played out of his mind. I mean, it, it, but for one play, they probably win the Super Bowl and he's MVP. And we're having a whole different conversation right now uh, about him. But, you know, this is this is a team. When they added A.J. Brown, in my mind, behind that brilliant offensive line, and Jalen Hurts played the way that he played last year, and A.J. Brown could do those read option slants and catch and run kind of things. I, I, I think they have the most talent. And Jalen Carter coming on, in my opinion, was the best player in the draft last year. Um, they're loaded. They got their two corners back. They're, it's a loaded football team. Well, uh, one week from tonight, can't wait to watch you uh, in the booth, listen to you in the booth, kicking it all off uh, when we'll either be talking about the Chiefs being – uh, a dynasty because we overreact or the Lions will start um, getting everybody's attention you know like this is going to be great I can't wait what a fun game this is Chris I look forward it to it I was surprised the Lions got the opening night game uh, but the more I study them you, know, you win eight of your last ten and your offense is the whatever fourth ranked offense something like that in the league and their defense was 32nd and I guarantee you their defense is going to be middle of the pack this year. They are much, much better, much improved in the secondary. Um, so it's going to be fun. It'll be a great night. Well, last time Goff and Mahomes faced off under the lights, uh, 105 points. I know uh, Todd Gurley's not walking through that door, to use the Patino phrase, but um, <laughs> it's going to be fun. I, I look forward to it. I really do, Chris. Thanks for the time here, as always. Bye, right, buddy. Good talking to you, man. Right back at you. The one and only Chris Collinsworth from Football Night in America. And you can join Chris one week from tonight with Mike Tirico, uh, Melissa Stark on the sideline on the call of Lions at Chiefs in the NFL kickoff game on NBC and Peacock. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.